In this video, I'm going to show why mist filters may be more useful than ND filters on smartphones. A bit controversial, right? I will also review this very cheap variable ND filter from KNF Concept to see if it's in any way usable. I will also compare it to a slightly better ND filter and review this even cheaper black mist filter also from KNF Concept. I'm using my iPhone 14 Pro more and more now because of the convenience. Or at least I want to use it more, but even this Pro iPhone produces a processed and a digital look that I don't like at all. Wannabe filmmakers such as myself often use filters to change that look to something that leans more towards the image from a real camera. Every camera YouTuber relentlessly review all sorts of ND filters and always say they're a must in your camera kit. But I don't really see it that way. First, real quick, what the ND filter does. It's sunglasses for your camera and when it's bright outside you don't have to crank up the shutter speed. Ideally, you want to keep the shutter speed two times the frame rate at 30 frames per second. The shutter speed should be at around 1 60th, for example. This will give you enough motion blur, so that the image looks natural. I claim, for most of us that are using a smartphone or an action camera to film, we rarely need a ND filter. I bought this filter only because I ended up in a situation where I was testing a pair of bike glasses, and this scene in particular looked very jerky. Of course, I realized that the shutter speed was very wrong, so I got this cheap filter. Only if I would end up close to water again with my iPhone. But here's where I say that you, for the most part, don't need an ND filter. If you're not close to water, maybe you're doing some type of vlogging or talking head video. Do you really wave your hands so much that you need that motion blur? Is there any real world difference? Here are a couple of examples where I think there is a difference. Traffic close to the camera? Yes, sure, there is a clear difference. Not that this looks bad, but maybe it's not very cinematic. But for a vlog or something similar, however, I don't think anyone will ever care if you use an ND filter or not. And this is close to water, where the sun is quite low and there is a lot of glitter in the sea. And again, there is a difference. But there are also other examples where there's very little difference. My conclusion is that there are a few rare occasions where an ND filter really is needed. On dry land, when I'm just filming myself or a bike for instance, an ND filter is pointless for the most part. Another negative with ND filters, apart from that they usually introduce a color cast to the image, is that they interfere with the digital stabilization. To make digital stabilization work, it needs to have sharp images to compare one frame from another. Having motion blur in the image will greatly affect the stabilization negatively. It's of course a balance here. It looks faster and more natural to ride a bike with some motion blur and a bit of shakiness. But you need to know that ND filters and stabilization are tightly connected. It's different with my real cameras, where the filters can always stay on. And I also use those cameras in a different way. Yet another negative with this cheap ND filter in particular is that weird bluish glitter, which I only saw when so filming these blue boats and ferries. That's not very cinematic, is it? That's only one of the issues with this cheap KNF concept filter. There is a heavy color cost present. Mostly, I can compensate for that by lowering the color temperature by around 1000 kelvins. But that's quite a lot. But I do have my other ND filter, which is also a 52 mm ND filter. And it's from, um, I think it's from Tilde or something. It's not very expensive, but it is a bit better than that ND filter that I have there on my phone right now. So let's give it a go and uh, see what the difference is. Okay, I think I've exposed this correctly. This is a one to five stop ND filter, so it's a bit brighter. And I, I'm not sure if the exposure is correct, but I changed that in post a little bit, I think. But anyway, it's 5,500 kelvins right now, and I feel straight away, just from looking at the display, that the image is much clearer.
The Tide filter works a whole lot better and is in a completely different league, even if this particular filter wasn't very expensive. There are other filters with higher quality from KNF Concept, so I haven't entirely lost hope of the company as such. This is the lowest tier filter, and perhaps the K-series is something that I will stay away from in the future. If it is a cinematic look you're after, I might have a better filter for you. A black mist filter. In this case, it's the cheapest black mist filter from KNF Concept, just to test. You probably already know what the mist filter does, but here's a very quick recap. I stole this text from Adorama. Mist filters are made of glass with black particles caught inside. Those particles diffuse the light across the scene, reducing contrast and clarity and making the highlights glow slightly. Shooting through a thin curtain of mist or haze will give you a similar effect, hence the name. So my thought about using a mist filter is to mitigate that over sharpen and digital look and make the image into something a little bit more analog. Philip Bloom has used mist filters when testing smartphone cameras together with a piece of software called Film Convert Nitrate to further soften the image to look more analog. This is my question to him on the subject. My interpretation is that only mist filters don't do very much, but let's give it a try anyway. Lastly, I want to say a few words about this filter holder too. It actually works better than I thought. It's almost too small for my iPhone 14 Pro, and I need to remove my phone case before using it, which is a bit of a shame. I have tried a couple of cases, but it's best to not use any case at all. Anyway, it does cover all lenses once the case is off, but something I've learned is that it's good to have a slightly larger filter over the lens to avoid vignetting, for instance. The ND filter and the clip came together, but the filter is removable. And if you, like me, own other 52mm filters, they can be used instead. Or this black mist filter. Conclusions then? Get the clip, get the black mist filter, but if you need an ND filter, stay away from the cheap ones. See you in the next video.